Guys, today on the podcast, I'm super stoked because today I get to interview the other Coach G, the man, the founder behind Edwardsville's hottest new fitness coaching studio, personal uh, coaching and semi-private training studio, I Coach Fitness, the man, Giannis Katranz is on the podcast today. Stick around. Welcome to the CrossFit Edwardsville Community Podcast, where we hear and learn from our coaches, CrossFitters, and Glen Ed community leaders. Now, here are your hosts. Dallas and Greg. What's up, CFE and Glen Ed community? I am Coach G, the CEO and GM at CrossFit Everzil. On our podcast, as you know, we meet and learn from our CFE coaches. We learn more about our CFE CrossFitters. And occasionally, like today, we get to meet and learn about locally Glen, like Glen Ed area owned businesses and the characters and founders behind them. Today, we're excited to welcome the founder and leader of iCoach Fitness, an Edwardsville area personal training and semi-private training studio, the man, the other Coach G, Coach Giannis Katranzis. Giannis, welcome to the podcast. Love it. I appreciate the intro. Uh, thank you guys for having me. And uh, as I said, it's my first, my first time being on the podcast. Uh, really looking forward to it. And uh, let's just have fun with it. That's awesome, man. Adam. So in case you guys don't know, iCoach Fitness is Edwardsville's newest fitness coaching studio. It's located off of I-157 near Motomar, or at least up until up until today, it has been. As I understand behind the scenes, there's there's some growth. So I won't steal that thunder. I'll let Giannis, Coach G, tell that story himself. But today in the podcast, we're going to learn more about Giannis directly about iCoach Fitness, the origin story, and the brand. And we'll dive deeper and learn more about him as a man, a founder, an athlete, and an entrepreneur. You excited, Coach G? Love it. Love it. I appreciate all the kind words. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, as I said, I've watched a couple of your podcasts. I love the energy. I love all the value and the content you guys provide to the community. So uh, thanks for doing this. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So we'll start with a couple of easy questions. So Giannis, tell us your background with fitness, like your own background. Give us like Giannis, Coach G, yes. as an athlete himself. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So um, from a very young age, I mean, obviously I was involved with a lot of sports, uh, played basketball, volleyball, soccer. And, um, you know, I was just on an all around um, type of guy being on the field and competing. Uh, so I always had that passion uh, to be more and do more as far as fitness goes. Um, and uh, I think it was nine years ago, about to be 10, coming up in August, I, um, I decided to uh, move on to the United States and uh, explore more options as far as sports go and uh, fitness and uh, schooling and um, just try something different in life. Um, so I made a decision with my family. Um, I came over here when I was 17 first to play uh, basketball and as well go to school. And uh, I just continued on that path. I, uh, I enjoyed being here. I initially moved to San Luis, um, loved the area, loved the people I met and the connections I made. And um, after two years of playing sports, I came down with an ACL injury. So oh, that no. took a, yes, yes, that, that took a heavy hit on me. And uh, um, just decided to stick around and do what I can as far as sports go. Uh, but I also fell in love with a system, the academic approach United States takes uh, with the students and uh, just continued on on the fitness path, uh, move on to strength conditioning and uh, so on and so forth. And here we are today, owning a gym and uh, helping others improve their fitness and lifestyles. No, I, I love it. And I feel like there's, there's some interesting story here. So like, yes. like, why was it? Why St. Louis? Like, I mean, you're coming to a, a big country. And where are you originally from, Coach G? Where are you from originally? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny story. I, I've moved around a lot. I was born and raised in the island of Crete, uh, which is pretty yes. much in the south of Greece. And uh, when I was 13, um, I decided to compete at a higher level and uh, moved to Athens, the capital of Greece, for about three years. Um, played for two teams and competed in national titles. Um, it's actually funny, but I played against Giannis Adetokounmpo uh, when he was no in that kidding. young age. <laughs> yes, yes. And he, back then, even back then, he was the MVP. But we still, we still managed to beat him twice. And uh, no kidding, that's finals. amazing. So yes, yes. You, cool you, you, taught, you, you, you taught uh, Giannis Adetokounmpo a couple things, right? You taught that's him right. a thing or two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. He, he followed my steps. He just took it a little bit further. 
yeah. than me when it came down <laughs> to basketball. So uh, it was it was really cool experience to play against him. And uh, um, you know, after 17, um, it's it's that point of your life when you're in Greece where you're like, am I going into university and continue on uh, to study and uh, become a professional, or do I want to continue on with professional sports? Um, I was just curious what I want to do with my career. And um, after after discussing it with my family and finding some opportunities to go study abroad, I decided to come to the United States as an exchange student. Um, and uh, I had actually three options to come to the United States, New York, uh, Phoenix, and San Luis. No um, kidding. Do not, do not know how I decided to come down to San Luis. But uh, may, maybe, maybe now I would change my mind when I was 16, 17. Um, yeah. just experienced that bigger life and uh, uh, that warm weather in Phoenix. Uh, but um, yeah, I didn't know a lot about the United States and uh, St. Louis looked like the best fit for me as far as schooling and, you know, sure. transitioning into my life when I was 17. Uh, then I want to go into a big city and, um, and get lost in that aspect. But it was it was the best choice I made so far in my life to move to move here. So. Yeah, there's something really special about fitness in the Midwest, you know, and yes. I don't I don't have a negative thing to say about anything more like East Coast or more off to the West. But I will say there's really something to like the Midwest toughness, the toughness of the, uh, all the us, you know, somewhat country folk out here. <laughs> Love it, love it. Yes, actually, I actually had no idea about country music till I got here, and uh, it was just like one of the funniest things that I uh, I got to know from very early when I when I moved to the United States. So um, that was that was a good transition, I should say. So I love it. So Coach G, tell us more about your journey to becoming a fitness instructor and like your passion for teaching and motivating people. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So um, as I said, after my injury, I kind of. Uh, uh, fell in love with working out and trying to get back into the performance level I always wanted to be. Um, and uh, the only opportunity I could find outside of that was to shadow um, a lot of athletic facilities, whether that was performance related, athletic training related, uh, PT related, strength conditioning. So I shadowed a lot after my injury and tried to keep up with uh, with basketball um, and my schooling. And um, I, I enjoyed a lot working with athletes and being in that team setting and that environment. Uh, but I think I enjoyed even more working with the general population and the things, um, you know, being so mature on the things they had to learn and the foundations and teach them and motivate them to be more active and more physically fit. Um, that kind of like win the inside of me. So um, this is how I started and uh, became a personal trainer worked as a uh, group fitness instructor for multiple locations here in Edwardsville and St. Louis um, before I came up with iCoach Fitness. Uh, yeah. But that's kind of like the short the short story behind how I got into fitness uh, after sports. Cool. And I, I think that's actually how we first met, right? I think we crossed paths yeah. once upon a time. If, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, I think at the time you were working with uh, the Fast Fitness Boot Camp and we crossed paths yeah. and... You talked a little bit about your aspirations to, to to coach, and I think that we even talked at one point about maybe you coming to to CFE and shadowing and studying us at work. Do I remember that right? Absolutely, you're you're absolutely right. And I think I was there about a month, and uh, it it wasn't necessarily something, at least that I can recall, that turned me away from uh, from uh, CFE. Uh, my only issue back then was I was interning you know, at the strength conditioning for about like 20 hours a week. Um, right. I had plans to travel and, you know, shadow as many places as I could. Uh, sure. I was my in my junior year of school. So um, I was just exploring uh, a lot of options and trying to come up uh, with really something I loved and I, I could see myself right. doing down the road. Um, so it was, it was challenging. It was a transition point in my life where I decided I didn't want to be into the PT and AT. Uh, I want to say PT, physical therapy, and athletic training background, sure. and right. fall more into fitness. Uh, so it, it was a lot, but I think that was a turning point in my life where I said, okay, I think I enjoy personal training a lot and uh, training small groups of people at a time. Uh, and that's how I came up, like, to define my approach to training and fitness. So, uh, yes. And you told me a lot within that month. Uh, I, oh, have, I have to say, I love being there. I love the coaches. Yeah. I love the culture. Um, it's just, it was an extremely difficult uh, part of my end to keep up with school and internship and shadowing places. So yeah. it was a lot. 
Well, I, I thank you for the kind words. And I, I, I know that, you know, as somebody who has like had that dream, I know how exciting it is to see like your dream come to life. And, you know, fast forward to now, you're the founder of iCoach Fitness. So let's learn more about Coach G, the entrepreneur. So it is, is IKF, iCoach Fitness, is this your first business? Like give us more of your background as an entrepreneur. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I, I want to bring this up because they taught me so many things and I'm, I'm always grateful for the opportunity they gave me back at Fast Fitness and SIUE, uh, Campus Rec. They taught me so many things as far as coaching and uh, handling programs and managing aspects of fitness and employees. Um, so that's how the whole story started. And um, I actually attended a conference back in 2019 uh, in Chicago called Perform Better. And um, I more specifically attended a session of Thomas Plummer. He's called like the big father and founder of, of a lot of fitness places. And he's been yeah. doing this for like a long time. I think he actually just retired a couple of months ago. Um, but he actually opened up my eyes to a whole other aspect of fitness called the business side of things. Uh, sure. And that's when I really fell in love with the fitness industry uh, and decided to start with iCoach Fitness. So when Fast Fitness closed and I was finishing up my time with Campus Rec, um, I was able to, um, to sustain some of the clients. Uh, they lost to the pandemic and shutting down sure. their gym. And uh, just started training outside of my garage for fun. And uh, I wasn't sure where I was going at the next step of my life. Uh, right. with my wife wanted to go into med school and uh, work in the, um, in the pharmaceutical industry. So I wasn't sure where we would end up being. Uh, so everything started outside of my garage. And uh, some of my clients started making fun and said, you know, this, this garage looks too empty. I think you, look, uh, you need a couple of, of, of additional things in here, maybe a sign uh, to define who you are and what you're doing. Right. And that's, that's when I actually um, thought of the iCoach Fitness name, actually, the other side. Um, but, you know, it's my first initials and then iCoach Fitness um, yeah. that came up with a, with, a, with a logo and the name. Um, and that's how everything started, you know. We kind of outgrew training outside of the garage. And um, after about a year and a half, we decided to move into a physical location. So uh, here we are at the same location uh, you mentioned earlier. And we're actually getting ready to expand, which is uh, really exciting. We've been open for yes. about eight months. And uh, we've reached uh, 170 clients up to this point, And uh, we're excited to continue to grow. So uh, we're looking forward to having an additional space and uh, being able to serve more, more members of our community here in Edisville. Hey, that's great. So it sounds like shout out to Val and Chad of the original Fast of Fitness Boot Camp. Yes. And yes. Uh, it, it, it does seem like the iCoach Fitness, like the brand and what you do, is like a natural progression from what they were doing at that time. And, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that Fast Fitness Boot Camp didn't see through the pandemic but i do think it's pretty cool that coach g has been able to step into that role and op like offer that opportunity for fitness to the glenette area in that stead and by the way shout out to to val she's now uh, pretty into the jujitsu thing just like me we were both part of tag team That's bj awesome. we were actually That's at the awesome. same event this past this past saturday and uh shout out to chad also people that helped uh, give Coach G his, his launch. Yes. So then what, what is the mission of iCoach Fitness? The mission statement, the vision statement, the core purpose? Like give us, give us that high level vision for this brand and this business. Absolutely, absolutely. And as, as you mentioned, uh, shout, out, shout out to those individuals, Val, Chad, and every other member of Fast Fitness. But uh, also when I was a part of Campus Rec, I fell in love with the personal training and the way they run their small group training. So that's how I came up with the whole idea of, you know, I coach fitness and what it truly means and what is our mission and vision um, of fitness and uh, for our community. And uh, we came up, you know, with a mission statement of, we're a personal training and semi-private training studio that our mission is to teach individuals all the foundations of signal movement uh, and being able to take them from where they are in life to the next level of their careers, whether that is, you know, lifestyle, building muscle, burning fat, uh, whatever the case may be, 
but also do it in a way that they learn as much as they can about fitness and not just being member of a gym to work out. So this is our long-term mission. We want to teach people how to move well and move often because we think those are the individuals who will uh, sustain their strength and their longevity um, down the road. Um, so our main, our main priority is to do that for our clients um, and serve them uh, any, the best way possible as far as foundations of fitness and strength training and, uh, um, and everything that comes along that. Love it. Move well, move often. Correct. Our quote from Coach, Coach G, part of the core mission at IKF. Okay, so then getting back to Giannis the Entrepreneur, like we all, we all crash and burn occasionally along this journey. Right. We make mistakes. And some of the most interesting stories come out of the mistakes that we make as entrepreneurs and business leaders. So my question for you, Giannis, Coach G, how has a failure or apparent failure set you up for later success? Or to put it another way, to, to rephrase the question, do you have a favorite failure of, of yours? Tell us that story. Yes. I mean, being, being an independent trainer and then moving into being a business owner, it's a huge stepping stone. So I feel like the past eight months of being a business, um, I failed multiple times, uh, but that's what keeps the burning desire in me to uh, keep learning and keep growing every single day to become more and be more for not only my members, but also the community. Uh, so it's, it's a really um, difficult point, but also my most enjoyable point of my career where I get to learn more and uh, uh, be able to give more uh, to my community uh, as a business owner. Um, and I think that's, as I said, like kind of the biggest failure I see every single day in my life of, you know, I'm waking up, I'm learning from this business. Uh, how can I bounce back and, uh, and do more and be more as a business, as a gym owner, um, as a community member, um, as a trainer. So it's, it's a lot of things that I learn every single day. Uh, and as I said, when I got into this thing called business, um, I, I doubted myself a lot and I wasn't sure if, uh, uh, if I'm making the right choices and the right decisions, but, um, through the struggles, I feel like I can see more of the sunshines. Um, so I've definitely, I've definitely uh, seen a lot of progress the last eight months of, of, of owning a business. Yeah, there's, there's definitely like that, that like the hockey stick trajectory, the, the learning curve that happens like the first few years. But yes. what's, what's amazing is it seems like Coach G has like the learner's mentality where you appreciate right. either I'm going to succeed or I'm going to learn and I win either way, right? Correct. You said it perfectly right. And I live by that every single day. I mean, it's either you succeed or you learn. There's no, there's no failure, especially in a, uh, in, in a position where you have to lead a business and everybody's looking up um, to you to sustain this business. It's, it's right. a difficult position you have to be in. So I feel like every day you have to give your best, whether you succeed or you learn. Uh, so that's the way I approach life right. every single day. And you're, you're the go-to guy. You become the problem solver. You become the solutions guy. And I think it was, I think it was like some months ago, I, I, was, I, was, actually, I was actually driving past IKF, and I thought I, I saw Giannis like giving a tour of the facility like on a Sunday to his family. Did I see that right? Like, have your folks been by? Correct. You what do your parents you think saw, about all you of this? The right. it's, it's, it's crazy. That was actually my first, um, the first time visit my parents ever made in the United States. Uh, so it's kind of crazy to come over and see the transition of being in life from being an athlete to going to school to getting my degrees and uh, opening up my own business. And, you know, uh, um, it's it just it's just crazy to put it into words. But uh, for them to see something like this for um, for their kid, I think it, it, it was Definitely a great moment, and uh, uh, maybe you you um, kind of like so part of it. So that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's um, I'm sure they're like they're really proud of you and like what you have built. What was this their first time to the states? Yes, the very first time to the United States. They actually had plans of coming back in 2020 when COVID hit because that's when I was graduating with my first master's in exercise science, uh, and then at the same time my sister was graduating uh from michigan but um covid kind of like screwed our plans and they never get to right. uh, make it here my sister moved back home so uh that was their very first time being in the united states and uh, experiencing 
everything I've been through life the last nine or so years. Man, that's wild. So uh, yes. it sounds like the pandemic kind of put the kibitz on them coming over here to, to see your graduation. It just kind of put the brakes on yes. everything. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's crazy. What, was yes, it very difficult for them to get into the States to come and visit Giannis? I, I don't know what yes. it's like to, to fly in from Europe now. Like, it, well, I mean, do they have to really jump through a lot of hoops just to get here and see you and see your business? Yes, yes and no. I mean, before the pandemic, the main reasons were that, you know, every time I had an opportunity during a holiday or summer break, I would go back and visit my family. So they never made it. Gotcha. We never, I should say they, we never really made it the priority of them come to visit because we knew eventually me and my sister would graduate so that we get their opportunity to come and see us. Uh, but, but it's a long trip. I mean, from where they're from to come here, my first two years, I remember, uh, you have to take four different plane rides to get here. And, uh, and oh it, it, it's a long, it's a long, it's a long trip. It's like a 30 plus hour trip um, oh my to make Lord. it here and get, and get to visit. So, um, yes, I mean, it, it, it was awesome to see them, but uh, during COVID, you know, the, the, the border was closed, so they were not able to come and visit. And then the vaccinations and uh, all the cards and being negative on your on your PCRs, you know, all that stuff just took a hit on everyone, um, obviously. And, you know, it just happened for them to visit now for the very first time. Now, I'm, I'm curious now, like, I, like, just one last question before we move on to our next yeah. category. So, obviously... When, you know, t uh, Coach G's uh, parents come in to town, they got to see IKF. But where else does Giannis take them to visit when they're in St. Louis, Missouri, their very yeah. first time in the States? I, I want to know yes. what the, what's, the, what's the hit list, man? What was the uh, yes. what were the starring attractions? Much, what, what have they seen now in the country? Yes, I, I pretty much walked into the last nine years of my life, try to show them where – you know, uh, where I stayed my first, my very first year being a high school student uh, here in St. Louis, uh, where my high school was, some of the teachers, you know, that aspired me to, uh, to do more and, and be more. Uh, because it's funny, actually, when I came first at 16, uh, I got into the plane. I, it was a crazy decision of my life. And, uh, you know, thanks to my parents, part of that. But I didn't, I didn't speak the language at all. When I mean at all, I mean, zero language not now i'm proficient at it uh, i still get my jokes along with my clients uh but i didn't speak any english when i first no came to the united states and uh so when you first, first when you first came here you did not speak any english whatsoever zero barely made very merely to the airport <laughs> okay. And now, and here, here we are, fast forward to today, you're being interviewed in, in the English language on our podcast. You come a long that's way, right, to be that's honest. Right, that's right, that's right. It's crazy. It's been a crazy, I appreciate that, yes. And I took them to the high school, the host family I stayed with, which was, you know, being in a family where they speak the language every, every single day, helped me a lot to advance um, uh, in my speaking ability, understanding the language. And um, after that, I, I, I changed the universities, uh, went to Maryville, to SLU, Southern Illinois University of Edwardsville, obviously being my final destination. I got my first undergrad there. I continue on, became a grad assistant, and got my first master's. And I'm currently doing uh, my business degree as well at, uh, at SIUE. So I've showed them my academic part of life and athletic, and also so show them around, you know, St. Louis area and Edwardsville. And uh, they absolutely loved it. They loved everything about what gotcha. this place has to offer. Yes. Do you take them to see the Arch or a St. Louis Cardinals baseball game or any of that? You know, I not so much the sporting uh, part of it. Uh, I, 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 will, I will say that myself. I'm not really a big fan of, of uh, baseball. Uh, I'm more of a fan of uh, hockey. I'm really excited for soccer coming yeah. to town. But, um, yeah, we, we went to see, you know, um, Forest Park, walk Forest Park, uh, showed them the Arch, so went to some uh, cool spots. Uh, in St. Louis for food, uh, but it really like as usual. I mean, it, it kind of like reminds them of home and uh, smaller, smaller town where you can walk around a lot and, uh, right. and you know, move on your own pace type of thing. So uh, they enjoyed Edwardsville more than St. Louis. I get that. Yeah, I feel like one of the nice things about Edwardsville is we get to be enjoy all the benefits of St. Louis without right. any of the negative drawbacks. <laughs> Correct. Correct. We can actually see the arch and eat gooey butter cake and toasted cake. ravioli without I have to actually have to deal with all of the crime from over there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think that's my most exciting part about Edwardsville is 
um, they have, uh, I think I, I read it in a newspaper, or one of my clients tagged me actually, uh, they are bringing Clementines over here. And I said, man, I'm going to have to stop being a trainer and do something else in my life after that. <laughs> it's like my, my, my absolute favorite ice cream place in St. Louis, Clementine's Creamery, and they're coming to Edgerswell, and I'm like, oh, this is just bad news. Shout out to Clementine's uh, Creamery. <laughs> yes, you know, we, yes. at Cross from Edwardsville, we have, we have Annie's Frozen Custard on the same road as us. Right across, and, yes. <laughs> literally, you can't drive away from Cross from Edwardsville without going past there, and yes. uh, there's been, there have been incidents <laughs> I cannot. I can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, it's funny, yeah, because the spot we're in, you know, we we're located right next to Motor Mile, as you said, but we'll have also Joe's Pizza right next to us. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of funny on Fridays. I will look around my window, and make sure my clients are not sneaking into Joe's uh, to yeah. grab some pizza to go right after their workouts. Uh, I've got some. We'll not bring up names, but uh, right. it's, it's like the funniest thing ever. But yeah, Coach G is. Uh, he's channeling his basketball background he's blocking out right block out that's right block out that's right block out <laughs> get out of the street that's right awesome <laughs> so coach g what is the best part of the, of your work like if there's one thing you'd love to experience every day with ikf what is that joy to being uh you know uh, able to come and work with uh, all my trainers my training team my clients uh, and be in a position to, you know, lead such an awesome community uh, that we'll have here I coach. Uh, I think that gives me the greatest pleasure every single day to wake up and do. Um, but, you know, also other daily stuff to be blessed about, you know, my um, my wife, all the things we get to do together um, and being able to, to be a business owner and do what I really love and are passionate about. Um, and that, you know, seeing how um, our clients' lives are progressing to being the best they can possibly be so uh, those are some of the things that you know motivate me to wake up and, and and do and do more so love it so then let's let's take the flip side of that coin mm -hmm. what, what is the hardest or the worst part of your work or to put it another way coach g if you could make one problem go away forever what would it be it will never go away but uh i need more sleep in my life there's there's not enough uh there's not enough time to uh to sleep uh when you're leading a business and especially when you're starting a business and i'm sure you've been in those shoes before but oh yeah um, there's definitely oh, yeah. not enough time to slow down or sleep uh which you know some of the days will really will really show but i tried my best to uh, to not show that that side of me but uh definitely resting it's, it's been a challenge the last the last year or so um, but I'm enjoying every minute of it. So what can I say? That's the, the entrepreneur lifestyle, many long days, many yep. long hours we can relate. So, yes, absolutely. But, I mean, obviously like we're always learning, right? We're learning as we go through this journey. I, I want to know like what mentors have been the most influential on Giannis personal or business success. You've referenced this a little bit so far in the conversation, the Chicago conference right. that you did, but like, who are some of the most influential people in terms of like your personal or business success? And then what are the key things that you've learned for them? Or you know, you know, do some shout outs to people who have coached you to success. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, um, you know, I, I'm always looking up to, uh, to fitness uh, mentors as much as I can. I'm part of a mastermind. Uh, it's called the uh, 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 Simple, Profitable uh, and Fun uh, Mastermind. Uh, it's uh, part of a uh, of the you know big community in fitness industry, and uh, the leader of it is called uh, Vincent Gabriel. That actually attended um, one of his uh, conference speeches back in Chicago. Um, and, you know, I fell in love with his approach to, to owning a business and um, I've followed him ever since then. And I'm actually part of his mastermind for the last uh, couple of months or so. And uh, he definitely teaches me a lot. But I also um, look up to some of my clients who uh, have helped me along the way and have guided me through uh, being a good person, being a good leader and, uh, um, you know, just being able to see the things that I wouldn't see for someone in my age and uh, how I can learn and grow uh, from the mistakes I make and uh, always learn from feedback those individuals give me. Um, so, you know, I have a lot of people, as I said, uh, that I look up to. Some of them are my clients, uh, and I'm really, really thankful to have them be part of iCoach. Um, but I always want to be a learner, so I don't, I don't have 
specific pointers that I want to give outside of those uh, um, sure. two areas. Yeah. What about books? Like what books? Because I, I know that for <laughs> almost all of us entrepreneurs, like yeah. we're, we're voracious readers. What books have been the most influential on you in terms of like personal or business success? And what are the lessons you've gotten from those books? Yes, um, I'm actually an avid reader. I love reading. I I enjoy it because it doesn't only allow me the opportunity to learn, but it also allows me the opportunity to slow down and kind of like stop time and uh, understand what's going on around my life uh, at the moment. Um, so I love personal development books, you know, books like Atomic Habits, Own the Day, Own Your Life, um, and other books like that. Um, I, I enjoy reading a lot because it allowed me to sustain uh, my strong mentality uh, of, of, of the daily things. Uh, but also I have been really enjoying lately reading, you know, marketing books, business related books, finance, um, and stuff like that that can, made me a, that can make me a better owner uh in, in business so i enjoy those two aspects uh over sure. in books a lot uh but yeah there's a lot of lessons to be learned in those books as well what i what i love with this Giannis, is like your commitment to learning the business side of things because so many people that go into the fitness space and become coaches they go into it and they love coaching and there's a lot of there's a very rewarding this is a lot of fulfillment that comes from seeing the, the coaching that you do change somebody's life, help them look amazing, feel amazing, live their best life. So many people that become coaches and then become business owners don't ever get the same coaching on the business side of things. And so they make a lot of really silly mistakes. And yes. It's like your commitment to the business learning, the business development side of things is going to make such a huge difference. And I love that you're a part of a mastermind for that same reason, because it's relatively easy for Coach G at CFE or Coach G at IKF to outsource the coaching side of things, but it's much harder to outsource a vision or to outsource the masterminding behind the bigger game plan. All right, I coach fitness is now going to move into this location. What are the next steps in that process? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have to agree with it 100%. You know, making that transition of being a trainer to actually own a business, uh, it's it's a whole nother level of, of lifestyle and fitness and knowledge. Um, so as I said, like, I'm just fascinated uh, and I'm just fascinated by the way business a business operates and how it grows and how many aspects there is to it. But um, I still I'm still in love with being a coach, being involved with my clients. So it's really hard for me um, to step away sometimes on the floor and let other sure. people uh, do the coaching for me. Uh, it, it's it's really it's really difficult. Uh, but it's it's part it's part of life and it's part of business. Uh, so you get you get to be the leader. You get to be the one who you know hand the learning down to the trainers and the individuals right. who who doing the part for you. Um, so I'm just right. fascinated about how the whole entire thing works. Um, but I'm definitely not ready to step away yet from from the coaching aspect of it. Yeah. Well, it's it it does become its own kind of very fulfilling thing when you coach the next generation of coaches that can convey your style of fitness Correct. you know what Correct. i mean was that but the uh there there's still like there's the greatest value to the business is what Giannis is bringing from that business perspective that business standpoint so so uh, a little change in gears what is it let's get to know Giannis a little bit better yeah. what, what is an <laughs> unusual habit or an absurd thing that you love um you know I, I i'm in love with a with a daily routine i've built throughout the last few years of you know doing what i'm doing now um so i enjoy a lot getting up early in the morning um getting a cold shower uh doing my first 100 pushups of the day uh making my bed so those type of i'm in love with and i cannot live without doing them um so that's like a big part of you know my day because if it doesn't yeah. start that way then i feel like i am not going to follow the right tasks i have for the day um, sure. so I, I say those things and you know other people uh in my class or you know that i walk around they look at me like um you're 
25 like do you know how to have fun and and, and do other things right. um so it's it's just weird to explain i do i do like to have fun um but i love doing those things uh on a daily basis like reading my book doing my shower um right and, and all that all that stuff first thing in the morning so i'm in love with my morning routine the most i think that you and i have this in common Giannis. <laughs> like i am i'm a dedicated and committed morning person I get up like insanely early in the morning. I'm like my ideal day is me getting up insanely early in the morning. And one of the very first things that I do is turn the dial all the way to as cold as possible and hop in the shower. And I've actually talked about on the podcast what I get from like that first thing in the morning cold shower. But I'm curious to know what it is for the other coach, G. Like what is it that it brings to your life or how does it help you to do that? Yeah, it just, I feel like it, it's better my mentality, different to sustain all the stuff that I'm going through each day. Uh, and it's really, for me, setting up the tone right to start my day. Uh, because if, you know, if my morning routine is off, then I feel like my whole day is going to be off. Uh, so it's right. really important for me, not only for, you know, the mental aspect of doing what we're doing every single morning, uh, but also the, the fact that it helps me structure my day and be on a path to succeed. Uh, and win the day every single day um, by doing that. So um, that's, that's right. the most important part of me. For doing it's that. like the lead domino to your day, yeah. right? If the first yeah. domino falls well, all the other dominoes fall well also. One thing and I, I've discussed at length, like I think the benefits of cold showers on the podcast, which I mean, there's all the, all the obvious physical benefits to recovery and restoration. Mm -hmm. If you do it first thing in the morning, there's the benefit of it takes you from zero to 100 real quick. Correct. <laughs> I'm wide awake. But I've, I've said before that I think like the greatest benefit that it gives is it sets a tone, like you said, that I'm willing to do uncomfortable things that are good for me. I'm good when to do uncomfortable things that will benefit. And that cold Correct. shower is really uncomfortable at Correct. You know, 3.30 in the morning. Correct. Yes, yes, I, I will have to agree with that. Um, and, you know, those are some of the things that um, our clients do see us doing every single day and how we're able to, to sustain our mental health, our physical health. Um, and I think that's something awesome that, you know, that I get to know other business owners um, doing such things to, to sustain right. their strength and their mentality to be like 100% uh, yeah. focused. So that's awesome to see. I guess I'm not the only one doing crazy stuff like that. Great. No, I, I love it. I'm right there with you. The way, that, the way that Eric Thomas puts it is that everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. Those right. words cross my mind often in the morning. Right. And I'm like, that water is really cold. I'm about to it jump is. in there just the same. It is. I, I, do find, I, I find also, maybe you do also, um, Giannis, like, there is so much variety and volatility and so many like new challenges every day on the business side of things that I find that I cling to those daily rituals and the morning routine to be my anchor and give me stability. You know what I mean? It's, it's the yin and the yang because on the business side, like Tony Robbins puts it this way, that we all have, there's, there's six core human needs. The, one of them is consistency and one of them is variety. We need both, right? I got all the variety that I need at CrossFit Edwardsville. I need Correct. to have that, the rituals to, to anchor me so that I don't feel like everything is wild and different every day. You know what I mean? Correct. I agree. It's one of those things we hear from. Yeah. We, we, we depend heavily on our rituals to keep us physically and mentally anchored. What are, what are you most proud of in your business, Giannis? I think the community we built um, as a gym, um, we really um, love all the individuals we're having here, love all the trainers. Um, and I think, you know, when we go out and do things outside of the gym to see people come together, uh, brings me the biggest joy, um, you know, just to see how people get together, even though they don't train together. Um, I think, you know, they have a lot of things to share every single time they see each other. So that to me, um, you know, not only as a trainer, but as a business owner, gives me the, the biggest joy. So for sure. for sure, because you're not just building fitness, you're building a community, building friendships, building a fitness Correct. family. And it's cool. 
if uh, our listeners, if you go and you read the comments in the iCoach Fitness like posts, it's best gym in town. People are doing a shout out to Coach, to Coach G here. <laughs> love to see those comments. Yes, you should see what they say in our private page. But uh, I love when they bring their best self on, on the public. So yes, for sure. Um, Giannis, yeah. what are you? What are you most proud of in life? Um, you know, I've experienced a lot of diversity uh, from moving so many times and doing so many different things um, that I think where I'm at at the moment, I think I'm present and uh, I really enjoy that uh, being my age and being able to say I've done the things I've done and being able to do the things I do. Uh, it's by far my proudest moment and uh, I, I, I want to stay grounded and I want to keep learning and uh, keep growing. Um, so I'm definitely proud of how far I've come. Um, definitely excited to see where I'm hitting, but um, this is this is where I am for now. Well, let's 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 take that thought one step further. So as you look ahead in life, what most excites you about the future? Like, what what are you most looking forward to now? Man, that's hard. That's hard to tell. Uh, but definitely growing. You know, uh, while we started here, I coach is going to be one of my main priorities. Um, you know, growing a family uh, and uh, being able to visit my my uh, Greek family more often will be another one of my priorities uh, because, you know, we travel so much. You don't really get to sit down and think that, you know, you have only a limited amount of times that you may see your family down the road by being so far apart. Um, and just, of course, prioritizing ourselves. I know the business is a lot of hustle uh, and being an owner and trainer and all that stuff uh, acquires a lot of stress and uh, gear on your body. Uh, but also being able to take care of myself and continue being physically fit and mentally strong uh, is going to be, you know, one of my main things moving down the road for sure. Yeah, be sure and be sure and schedule in time for, for your own fitness, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Yes, I, I also, you know, I never said that, but I'm actually still with a torn ACL, so I haven't fixed that yet. Um, and a lot of my clients are still on my butt about doing it. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I need I need to do it eventually at some point in my life. I'm always about, hey, you need to go check your, soul, your knee out and check your, you know, your, your pain out. But I never get to do that for myself. So they're always uh, on me about going. Um, so that's that's like the main priority within the next year or so. I'll give you some reminders too, like, yo, Giannis, you take care of yourself. <laughs> right. Because whatever, whatever you pour into your cup is what you have to share with others, right? See? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. All right, Giannis, if you could make one statement to the world, what would it be? Or to put it another way, if you had to choose one thing to say on a billboard that'll be seen by thousands or millions of people, what would that billboard say? Um, a group of my clients said it the best. They're, you know, in, in, in the later stages of their life and uh, they just get to enjoy now being in retirement. And I think they said it best. And I truly love the saying of, and I have it actually on my desk. It says, be you, do you, for you. And uh, I, I just love that in so many aspects uh, of things. And you can relate it to so many uh, things every single day, but, uh, you know, just to do that phrase every single day, it's the most important part for me. And I think it's the most important part of my clients. So that's why we've displayed it <laughs> on our desk for everyone who walks in to see, uh, because at the end of the day, it's all about, uh, you know, how you feel and, uh, how you look and, uh, you know, what do you do that matters? Um, so I think that saying kind of like defines, um, it should define every single individual you come across and you meet and you inspire. Um, so I think that's that's my favorite thing by far. Be you, do you, for you. Yadis, uh, how can people find out more about you or about iCoach Fitness if they're intrigued? Yes, absolutely. They can check us out online. We actually finished rebuilding our website, so they will find a lot of uh, cool information at iCoachFitness.com. Um, a lot of cool testimonials for people to see what we are actually about. Um, uh, and then our Facebook, Instagram, we put a, a lot of content out there, educational, um, inspirational, you know, and uh, event related to what we do um, every single month at our gym. Um, so we love seeing people. We love people to stop by and check in our facility, uh, but they can definitely request more uh, about what we do at our pages uh, and website. 
Awesome. Giannis, I want to say a great big thank you to you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed this. It's been, it's been awesome. Likewise, man. I, I love getting to know the other business owners of our community and realize like we have a lot in common. Those, this has been kind of cool. It almost like yeah. it reinforces that maybe there's, maybe we're doing something right if we think alike, right? Likewise, likewise. No, it's been awesome to be here. And I obviously, as I said, thank you for doing this. And uh, I've loved uh, being part of this podcast. And uh, um, I hope in the future we get to do uh, more things outside of here because we have so many things in common. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for, for Giannis to start the iCoach uh, Coach podcast. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, I'm going I'm to make sure you're the top, the top three I invite on that podcast for sure. <laughs> Love it. I look forward to it. You're yes. the other coach, G. Love it. Good times, man. Have an amazing rest of your day. To our audience, guys, have a beautiful and blessed day. Well, guys, we'll see you in the next one.